Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're learning strategies for business growth, especially for our Nigerian business terrain. Um, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. And we still have Abiola Champ with us. Abiola, you know what? I, I was going to ask you this question before we went on a break, but I think AK has something to comment on what I said before the break. Then I'll come to AK and I'll come back to myself. <laughs> Well, very, very short comment. So what you said is valid, but well, you should also know that most of these capacity building programs stem from a survey or stem from asking people what they need. Mm -hmm. And at some level, especially at the micro level, the differences aren't, aren't so much. The specializations aren't so much. Mm -hmm. They have common problems that they need to scale before they even get to an area where you say you want to specialize. And, and there, there are common things that cut across different um, different sectors, the common uh, commonalities that cost across. And then secondly, well, it's expensive. Mm. And yes, I mean, can also get it for themselves. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I understand that it's expensive. And that's why I'm thinking that have we really found, because it amidst all the problem. And that's why I was going to, um, the question I was going to throw to uh, Abiola is, Nigeria is actually unique. I, in fact, sometimes when I hear some business strategies that they say, oh, if you do this, do this, two plus two will become four. In Nigeria, it's not like that. Your two plus two can become minus 10. <laughs> or it can be, it can be 20. It depends on how you understand it and you do the two plus two, right? Strategies in Nigerian, uh, the Nigerian business terrain, actually, for me, I find that most times when people just give some kind of tips, and it doesn't really work like that. So that's why I'm actually happy on the fact that if we truly want to see growth and, and sustenance, right, you know, how do we even navigate, you know, what are the things to look out for in this Nigerian market? Then I'll come to Temi. Temi has been quiet for a minute. Okay, so uh, I like the fact that you're talking about strategies and that certain strategies, two plus one may be minus 10 or 20. The thing with strategy, again, is when we use these words, especially in consulting and some other people, it, it gives the person speaking a feeling that is making sense, right? And then and, and the person may, may not be making sense, you know? And it's simply about, about planning. And what I always recommend to clients, whether it's SME or um, even a fast growth business or well-established business already quoted on stock exchange, is that when you're engaging consultants and coaches for your um, strategy, be sure that they're not just people who are speaking English. Be sure that there are people who are one, competent, and their competence does not necessarily show by the certificates they have, is by the proven track record they have, that is one, and two, is that they really care about your growth, about your business, not just that they are there for the money. So which is why when there's a strategy, so let's say in the beginning of the year as a client, where I came to your, I mean, we came to your, to your organization, together we worked on how you should run, you know, this year, what you should do, what your marketing strategy should be, what your finance strategy should be, what your recruitment strategy should be, your HR strategy, and we agree on all of that. We don't just finish doing that. Uh, we say bye-bye to each other and then come back um, January of 2022 to see how far you have, you, have, you have done. The way it is supposed to go is while the strategy has been designed clearly mm -hmm. and you are running with it, there is supposed to be constant monitoring, yeah. which, is where, which is where that two plus two, because along the line, the two plus two that you've designed in January, week two of, two, of, of that strategy it may land to minus 10. Hmm. Another two weeks after, it may become 100, hmm. right? And then different kinds of things can happen in the course of the year. So what happens with strategy is that strategy is not meant to be cast in stones. Hmm. Strategy is supposed to be something you design as your guide for you to run with, and you keep on adjusting it. You keep on monitoring it. You cannot adjust if you are not monitoring. Mm -hmm. You keep on monitoring it so that you adjust based on the trends. Look at last year, for example. None of us expected that by second week in March, that things will shut down. Mm -hmm. Nobody did. I mean, so while in December of 2019 or January of 2020, uh, whoever has put in strategies in place, that will always mean that everybody will gather together. I mean, whatever business strategy you have, that means people will always converge in a place, you know, to run that strategy. Automatically, it will change. And so what was supposed to happen is constant monitoring. Mm -hmm. And now that, that, that one is a big blow, anyway, on the entire world. But there are times 
that the issue is not that big. It could be local, right? Absolutely. It could be local. It could be industry wide. It could just be for a sector. You know, different things come up. Uh, we normally say VUCA. Everybody started talking about VUCA, you know, uh -huh. uh, during COVID. VUCA Absolutely. has always been VUCA. The world has always been VUCA. I know, I know. We just need to sound, you know, like let, let's circle back and consult and speak. Yeah, you know, the world has always been VUCA. So what to do yeah. is constant monitoring, monitoring. So if two plus two is not adding up to four, what can we tweak? What can we change? If two plus two is not giving us a hundred, and I also caution clients that if our two plus two is giving you a hundred, don't get to turn and start jumping up and rejoicing because that same way that you experience that exponential growth without you planning for it, you can also express exponential decline without mm. you planning for it. Yeah. So it's not time to now go to the market and start spending the money anyhow, right? Take your wins, celebrate your wins, then re-strategize. Absolutely. Okay, so very quickly. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh, you were going to say Go something? ahead, go ahead, Timmy. Okay. So I know that a lot of small business owners are listening to us right now. So I just want you as the professional to actually tell them the importance of capacity building. We cannot stress it enough. Um, leadership, training, because I, I strongly believe that poor managerial skills is one of the problems that SME owners have. Because, you know, you just get up, you just say, oh, I want to start a business. You have no training. If you look at our Igbo brothers, they're actually really strong businessmen because they dedicate time to apprenticeship. And that's yes, what he yes. does. You're someone's mm -hmm. apprentice, you watch him, you learn the ropes, mm -hmm. and then you start up your own and you're very successful. But a lot of mm -hmm. people just want the shortcut approach. I was on Instagram um, a couple of days back and I saw somebody aggressively marketing a course that will help you understand the algorithms of Instagram to be able to sell. You need to master Instagram. When you master Instagram, you know how to sell. And I'm like, what if there's no value? It's not knowing Instagram that helps you sell. It's the value that you're actually, if I buy from you the first time and you sell me something or your customer service is poor, I won't come back. Sure. You know, so it's a multifaceted um, thing. And sure. but I know it all ties back to training. So you <laughs> as a professional, I need you to tell us how important these things are. Uh, are and oh, why did oh. you take it seriously? Great, 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 great point. Great point now, it's important for entrepreneurs to know that you can't give what you don't have, right? You can't give what you don't have. And especially in this world, knowledge is key. And when we speak of capacity building, we are looking at three things. We're looking at getting cutting edge knowledge, which is constant, which is something you should keep getting. So you don't get it in 2020 and then you are okay. No, you keep on getting it because change is constant. So you keep getting cutting edge knowledge, you keep refining your skills, and you keep improving your own attitude as well as the leader. You see, uh, one of my favorite quotes is by A.W. Toffler, who said that the illiterate of the 21st century won't be about those that can neither read nor write, but about people that cannot learn, relearn, and, and unlearn. Learn. And mm. this is about capacity building, which is so you are learning, you are getting new skills, you know, you are getting new information, you are improving on yourself, you are relearning something you have always known before. You've always known it. But it's important for you to update yourself on it. Then you unlearn. So you probably worked in an organization for some five years and you were reporting to someone, but now you're in the position of leadership. I subscribe to the thought that, yes, leadership is not about position, but there are times it is about position. And once you start to run a business, you are automatically in a leadership position because you need to lead a team. You need to guide people. And you cannot guide people at right if you don't know even what to do yourself. So, and there are some entrepreneurs that when they hear capacity building, they think you're talking about their staff, right? They don't think you're talking about them, you know, because the better, uh, the, the, the more knowledge you have, the better you can run your company, hmm. the better equipped you are to run the company. It is not about ego tripping. It's not about that, that, that I'm now my boss thing. Knowledge is still your own boss because you don't <laughs> know as much as you need to know at every point in time. Hmm. So it's important to subscribe to it. And it is a lifesaver. It is part of the ways to cut costs. Mm -hmm. Because when you learn what you're supposed to do, you will not make a mistake. Even if you do, your error rate will be lower. I mean, think about it that people that did not know about customer service, and then you've invested a lot, you've, you've taken capital, you know, you've taken some loan from a bank, and then uh, you need to repay it with some interest. And then the team you have, they are not delivering excellent, exceptional service, you know, for the customer to come back. Right. And and by the way, as the CEO, as the entrepreneur, 
you are the chief customer service officer. It is not delegated to the other people. Mm -hmm. You are the chief customer service officer. You are the chief technology officer. You are the chief marketing officer. You are the chief everything, everything. Even if your business is big and you are the MD CEO and you have someone in the role of chief marketing officer or CTO or any of those things, you are still the chief executive officer. Mm. So you need to learn. That's what we are saying here. You know, you need to learn. You need to, <laughs> you need to humble yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You need to humble yourself. You need stop, to learn. You stop, need to learn. Stop coming with you know, your chest. And, not, uh, see, that, that status is not a shoulder carry status. Uh, that status is a service, hmm. right? Service to your customers, service to your team members as well, so that they can make your business grow. grow. The way up is down. Somebody will say the way up is down. And that down is sitting down to learn. Hmm. And, you know, and, and this learning doesn't have to be expensive. This learning, again, I go back to your phone. This learning, you have Google on your phone, right? You can check out a lot of things on your phone. You can follow the right people even on social media, right? I, I, on Abiola Champ, for example, every now and then there's content that will help you to, to improve your business. You are not even paying for it. The only payment you are making is your data and that you are watching and you are learning and practicing. Absolutely. It doesn't even have to be expensive because when you don't learn, you are bound to fail. Yeah. Uh, it is said that um, in the first five years of any business that most businesses pack up, 80% of businesses pack up. And mm -hmm. the reason for that, the number one reason for that is lack of knowledge. Mm. You know, so you need to learn. Some people don't even plan. They just wake up in the year. They pray. They pray a lot that this year will be a great year. My year of success. My year of progress. My year of divine uplifting. My year of, you know, all of those things. They don't even plan for the business. They don't even have things that they'll say, okay, this year, this is what we'll achieve month one, month mm. two, month three. You know, just to have a forecast and then start but running. But with so much it. uncertainty. You know, this game. Sorry, with so much uncertainty, I'm just wondering how people would plan. Because you know what? COVID just made me very weak. Because last year, everybody was planning. You were ginger in January, everything. When COVID happened, everybody, all your plans just scattered. But let me take um, comments from... AK, you have a comment. Um, Tim, you have a comment. Let's take some comments from our audience. I'll take mine. Um, uh, proven track record and care for your business. Uh, that's what uh, I think um, Bimbo is saying that you should there should be a proven track record and care for your business. Then Lyo says most failure mm -hmm. failures in business I feel is everyone trying to own businesses. Not everyone should be a business owner. For example, you learn makeup and immediately start running your own business without um, uh, without um, I think what Tammy said the apprenticeship process. That's from Lyo. Tammy, you have a comment with you. And AK, you have a comment with you. Yes, I do. Yeah, so we have, uh, well, it's kind of a love note from Bimbo, uh, Bimbo from Aja, who runs a small business. As she says, I'm so in love with today's show. Thank you to the guests and ladies. A lot of notes for me. I am with my pen. Thank you, Bimbo. We're Thank glad. you, Bimbo. Thank you, Bimbo. <laughs> Thank you, Bimbo. Okay, AK. let me read mine. It's from Salusi from Abuja. It says, businesses should always be in a state of flux to survive changes in the environment. So I think it aligns with what Abiola Champ has said, is that you constantly need to learn. You know, some businesses have grown tremendously under COVID. And there's one thing I want to mention about planning. Planning helps you adjust quickly to the hmm. changes than if you did not plan at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you plan, at least you know what you were planning and you know where to adjust. So just imagine that you had no plan. Mm -hmm. Imagine how flummoxed you will be. You can um, even plan plan A and B. So you already know so you ahead of time that if A is not going to work, you just, exactly. <laughs> okay, so because we have a few minutes left, I'd like AK to quickly come in, Tammy, you come in, then Abiola Champ would round up for us. Okay, so I, I think I would just close with what I opened with. There are things that you cannot control, but you need to identify the things that you can control and work on the things that you can control. If you do not need to pay rent, you don't have to pay rent. The more you learn, the more you become aware of the opportunities to improve efficiency and grow your business margins. Yeah, and I would like to close uh, something that Biola already said, that technology is not necessarily a big thing. It's not this big infrastructure that you need to buy. Um, it's just the little, little things that you do that you, you know, make your business more efficient. Look, this is a world of digital. Uh, that's the future. 
digitalization, you know, we're going into this space where you must be able to do stuff digitally. And it also helps you, um, you know, break borders. You know, you want to stay in Nigeria and be able to offer your business products and services to, you know, people as far as Hong Kong and China and all of that. So embrace technology in every way that you can. Absolutely. You know, and I'm sure, you know, that's, that, that's a winner for every business. Absolutely. So, Abiola Champ. <laughs> okay. So, for me, I know as an entrepreneur, you really want to grow fast. You want to jump up to your vision. But it's important to know that if you jump up, you will come down. Hmm. But if you grow up, you will stay up. And the way to grow up is to learn steadily, implement what you are learning steadily, remain flexible on the journey, and keep enjoying the progress. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Remain flexible. Flexibility, I think, is one of the challenges that a lot of people face. They are so, you know, because the, their mind is already made up. This is how it's supposed to be done, and they're not flexible to changes. So let me just quickly wrap up with Benson's comment that says, lovely and insightful program today. Plan, take action, and be ready to adapt to fluctuations. I mean, thank you so much, Abiola Champ. You have been an amazing, an amazing guest. Um, we are definitely going to bring you back. <laughs> I hope you oblige us, uh, you know, with your time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, thank ladies. You. Thank you, thank AK. You, thank you, Tammy. Tammy. Okay. All right. So, uh, ways was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, influence lives towards action. And this year, we're starting our CSR focused on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. And if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you are a job seeker, keep watching ways. Follow us on all our social media handles, as this will be an all-year-round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all their eyes on ways. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Every problem is a gift. Without problems, we would not grow. That's from Anthony Robbins. We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring you another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.